this is Dave VE3OI and in this video I'll be going through the calibration process for uh, the SNA. But first I'd like to go through some of the equipment you're going to need to calibrate the SNA. Uh, first uh, you'll need uh, a set of cables and it's very important that you have good quality cables. Um, for this video I'm using these cheap um, uh, Chinese cables which uh, turns out to be not very good uh, for doing sensitive sweeps like uh, you you may get inconsistent results when you're doing SWR uh, measurements so make sure you get some good quality cables so you also need a signal source and your signal source must be capable of generating at least two uh, different uh, DBM uh, readings um, if you're using a square wave generator such as the XG3 you may want to set it to the lowest frequency possible and that way it ensures that you get the maximum number of harmonics that the uh, 8307 is going to see. Next thing you'll need is you'll need a frequency counter and you use that to calibrate the frequency accuracy of the 809850. You'll also need uh, some attenuators. You don't need this for the calibration but you'll be using um, attenuators to test the calibration to make sure it's working. You'll also need a return loss bridge to calibrate um, um, the SNA and you'll also need a uh, terminator. You'll, uh, like here I've got a BNC uh, terminator which can be used or you could use a dummy load, a 50 ohm dummy load. So with this version of the software, I have programmed it so it will ignore any prior uh, calibrations that you've got defined. So once it's powered on, it's going to ignore any calibration stored and it's going to force you to recalibrate uh, the entire SNA. So once it's powered on, you'll get the uh, three warning messages that says the 9850 has not been calibrated. You press any key. Then it says the 8307 is not calibrated. Press any key. And then it says uh, the sweep has not been calibrated. Press any button. So those messages are telling you that the uh, the frequency resolution of the 9850 has not been adjusted, so the frequency may not be accurate that the uh, 9850 is going to produce. As well, it's telling you that the uh, 8307 has not been calibrated, so it can calculate uh, uh, dBm from um, the voltage that the uh, 8307 uh, puts out. And as well, a uh, sweep not uh, calibrated means that the unit has not been calibrated to compensate for the signal roll-off with frequency of the uh, 9850. A couple notes about the uh, push buttons or the controls associated with the Arduino. There are two push buttons. There is the select push button and the execute push button and a rotary encoder which you can also push. So normally the select button will allow you to select from various options or to move between various options. The execute will accept an option and will actually run the actual uh, function. The rotary encoder changing it will change values whether it's a frequency or a DBM value or a voltage or you know markers it allows you to to change the position or the value and as well pushing the unit if you do a long push you push it for probably about three or four seconds the unit will reset and will exit out of whatever function it was in and as well a short push will change for example units so that you can go like from 1 to 0.1 or 1 to 10 to 100 uh, to 1,000 and so forth. 
So let's go through the calibration options. So the first calibration option is to, to calibrate DBM. So once you enter that, you will see the screen comes up and it uh, provides uh, uh, DB, DBM1, DBM2. There's another option here that says Calc for Calculate. There's a Slope and in Intercept. So first thing is to look at this Calc. So if you use Select, you can cursor over and you'll cursor over to Calc. And if you use a rotary encoder, there are two options. One is Enter and one is Calc. So Calc means it's going to calculate your the slope and intercept for the calibration for the uh, 8307 using these two DBM values. So you need to enter in what signals you're going to be feeding into the SNA to calibrate it. So for example, uh, one signal might be zero, uh, zero DBM, the other signal might be minus 33, or maybe you know the signal might be 1.1 uh, uh, DBM and the sec second signal will be 22.5 DBM. So that's that's how that works and uh, you can use the uh, select button to go over to the DBM and use the rotary encoder to change it. So right there it's changing it by 0.1 DBM. So if you push the rotary encoder uh, you'll see the value here it's saying 0.1. If you push the rotary encoder that'll change to 1. So now if you turn the rotary encoder your value changes by 1 and if you push it again it, it goes back to 0.1. Now the interesting thing here to note is that the SNA will force you to always have a minimum of at least 1 dB difference between these two values. You cannot have the same value across those. So for example it's at minus 4. If I try to increase it and go to 0 it won't allow me. It stops at minus 1. If I go the other way and I go all the way I think the maximum value is minus 73. If I go to minus 73 it'll wrap around and it'll come to 1. It will not go to 0 because this value is 0 it will not allow this value to be zero. Same thing if you go to the other value, that value is minus one, it will not allow me to go to minus one. It's at zero and I can't go any lower. And I can go higher, and I think the maximum value is 10, so if I go beyond 10, it's gonna wrap around to zero. It's not gonna roll back to like say, minus 73. So that's very, very important. So if you were to select Enter, select enter, what that means is that you can manually go and put in your slope and intercept here. You could manually go and enter it in. So that would be the case if you uh, wanted to get a really, really accurate uh, uh, calibration. You can take like uh, 20 or 10, you know, um, different readings and uh, do a least squares fit on like an Excel or, you know, some other program and calculate the slope and intercept then come and manually enter it here. So for the for what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, minus 33 and zero. So there, minus 33, zero, and the menu option here says, you know, rotary push. You could use a rotary push. You could push select to change between them, or you could press execute to go. So we're going to press execute to go. So it's prompting me to connect a minus 33 dBm signal, and then you press any button to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, a minus 33 dBm. So I've got my uh, XG3 connected, and I've got it generating a minus 33 dBm signal. So just one word of caution here. I would encourage you that um, if you're using a square wave generator such as the XG3 to select the lowest frequency uh, possible because you want as, as many harmonics to get into 
the uh, 9850 as possible or the uh, 8307 as possible so that it can accurately uh, uh, calculate the uh, signal strength. So it tells me here to press any key to continue or press execute to continue. So now it says to connect a zero dBm source. So I've just changed, I've just uh, enabled a zero dBm. And one word of caution here about when it says connect zero dBm, it's rounding off the value. So for example, if you had 33.5 or 33.9, it just truncates that last digit and it displays it here. This is just a prompt for you to, uh, telling you to connect your minus 33 or you know whatever signal level in here. It's not meant to to tell you to connect, you know, the an accurate signal source. It just it's it's a prompt. So there, the uh, uh, the calibration has been been performed. So now to validate it, you would go into power meter. Okay, and for example, I'm generating zero dBm there, and the value that's being spit out is zero dBm. So there, I'm um, spit, uh, the XG3 is producing minus 33, and um, seeing minus 33. And uh, the XG3 is putting out minus 73 dBm, but I'm only seeing about minus 60 dBm. So that's the floor. So that's the lowest uh, uh, signal level that uh, this SNA can see. So it's pointless putting anything uh, below minus 60 dBm. So the next thing we'll calibrate is the frequency accuracy of the 9850. So we'll go over and select uh, Calibrate Frequency. And so here it's saying to use the Select to switch. So switch between the, uh, the options here. And I've got Frequency, Current, and New. So Current is saying that the current frequency calibration value is zero. And new is what I am going to change. So right now it's putting out a 10 megahertz signal. And I've got a frequency counter connected to the output of the, uh, of, uh, the SNA. And my frequency counter here is showing that I'm 52 hertz off. So what I can do is I can push the select button to switch down to new and use the rotary encoder to change the value. So as I change the value here, let's just, I'll change it by 10. And we go over and we look at what the frequency readout is saying. So it's 43, so you see it's gone down by about 10 hertz. So uh, 10, so let's try going up to about 80, 70. So right there I'm at uh, 70, and uh, frequency I've gone well below it, so I need to reduce the value. So right there, it's showing me that I'm off by 2 hertz, 1 hertz, 1 or 2 hertz, hertz so... We try taking it to, to 50, and I've gone over. There's 51. There's 52. So it looks as if 52 is the value. So at that point, uh, it says here, press execute to save and exit. So it saved uh, that calibration uh, value. So the next calibration option will be to calibrate the sweep. And uh, what that's going to do, that's going to uh, uh, cause the uh, 9850 to sweep through all the 
uh, supported frequencies and it's going to measure the output and it's going to save that uh, into memory so when you do subsequent sweeps it knows what the output of the 9850 is at a, a given frequency it's compensating for the, the signal roll off with uh, frequency just one word of caution here when you do a, a, a sweep calibration that's very dependent on the cables you use or any other equipment so if you do like a sweep calibration with one set of cables and you go and you put another set of cables in you may get a totally different uh, performance from the 9850 because of the losses uh, uh, in that cable so I would try and use the same set of cables that you'd use to do your, your sweep calibration so I've got the input and output ports connected with the uh, cable so I'm going to go ahead and run this function and see there's a prompt here that says connect into out so it says actually a rotary rotary push to continue but I think any key you could push will work so I'm going to put push the execute button and you see there it's doing the sweep and it takes a little while so that calibration is done it's giving you the values that it uh, calculated for the, um, the calibration so it saves that information so to test the calibration you just did one of the things uh, you could do is to use the frequency generator option and what that does that is um, indicating a frequency here that the uh, AD9850 is outputting it's showing you the DBM reading that the uh, 8307 is reading and then it's showing you the difference between what it thinks the uh, 9850 is putting out and uh, what's coming into the 8307 so that should be zero so it's saying it's seeing a difference of about uh, 0.19 uh, dBm which is uh, pretty good so you could change the frequency here and you can check to to make sure it's you get a um, you know relatively uh, you know small difference between the input and uh, output values and uh, that uh, db in stays relatively small stays around zero the other option you can do is you can uh, go to sweeps and execute just a quick sweep select all defaults and just have it do a sweep and it should be a flat line right across the screen and it should be zero your cursors uh, should be zero so if you use your your cursor and you uh, zoom across the screen it should should remain zero and I'll talk about doing a sweep in a second but uh, this is I just wanted to show one quick way of uh, checking the calibration so another way is to connect uh, attenuators uh, between the input and output ports and the uh, DB in value uh, that's displayed should correspond to the attenuation so for the next test I'm going to do is I've got a, uh, a 20 dB attenuator connected there's a 15 dB attenuator and a 5 dB attenuator connected between the input and output of the SNA and I'm going to go and uh, use a frequency generator function again and uh, here you're saying you're seeing it saying it's a 19.5 uh, dB uh, difference between what the 8307 is putting out and what the 98 uh, or what the 9850 is putting out and what the 8307 is reading so which is pretty good um, so it uh, corresponds very well to uh, the uh, 20 uh, dB attenuation value so the other thing we could do is again we could go and do another sweep so if we just run and accept the default values and do a sweep we should see 20 dB right across the entire screen it should be a flat line which it is it's pretty good so if we cursor around we should be seeing about 19 20 uh, dB attenuation
So the final calibration to be done is the return loss bridge. So just a quick note about connecting a return loss bridge. So here's a, a return loss bridge that I've got from, uh, from Kevin. And uh, as you can see, there are three ports. There's an RF in, RF out, and a device under test. Device under test is where your antenna will be connected. Your RF in will be connected to the output port of uh, the SNA. So that's going to be the frequency output from the 9850. And the RF out is going to be connected to the input port of your, your SNA or connected to the, uh, the 8307. So the first sweep you'll do, you have to have the device under test port open. It's got to be completely open. So if we go and we uh, execute the calibrate return loss bridge, see it'll say open bridge and press any button. So our bridge is open, connected, so we press any button and it uh, chunks along and it uh, performs uh, the sweep. And then it saves the, uh, that value. It takes a little bit of time to save the information to memory. Then it says to connect a 50 ohm terminator. So I've got a 50 ohm terminator here connected to the device under test port. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, press any button. And so again, it's going to continue doing the sweep. And it's going to save the values from that sweep. The way that we can quickly test the uh, calibration of the uh, return loss bridge is to uh, keep the 50 ohm uh, terminator in place and we'll do a SWR sweep and so with a 50 ohm terminator there the SWR should be one to one uh, right across all frequencies. So let's go ahead and we're going to execute a sweep and we're going to use the select button to, to go over to the sweep uh, function here. So what type is the sweep type? And we're going to select SWR. And there are various options you can pick. There's return loss, there's impedance, there's a crystal for calculating crystal parameters, uh, a 3dB sweep to calculate the uh, 3dB points for a crystal or a bandpass filter, uh, a filter sweep, and SWR. So let's go ahead and do the SWR sweep. So it chunks away, it comes back, and this should be a flat line. So there we're seeing a flat line right across the board. So if we use our cursor and we move, we're seeing about 1.1 uh, SWR, which is what we would expect. And it stays about 1.1, 1.5. So that's pretty good. So it looks as if our return loss bridge was uh, properly calibrated.